to sneeze. <coughs> yeah. <Ooh. laughs> Caught it. Everybody, it's your girl Jay and today I am here with my part four, the final wrap up for November 2020. I read a total of 20 books this month so these are the last five that I read so without further ado let us get started. <sighs> The first book that I'm going to talk about is Bitter Blue by Kristen Kishore. This is the companion novel to Graceling. I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. This book follows Bitter Blue, who after the death of her psychotic father, King Lek, an evil mind manipulator, dies 8 years ago. She becomes the Queen of Monsi. She wishes to know the full extent of the damage that her father caused on her kingdom, so she disguises herself every night and sneaks out of the kingdom. During her first outing, she meets two thieves who take her under their wing and help her discover things about herself that her father made her forget. So like I said, this is the companion novel to Graceling. I read Fire, which is the other companion novel, and I didn't like it. This one I enjoyed a lot more than Fire, but not as much as the Graceling. I really liked reading from Bitter Blue's perspective though. I think that she is a great main character. I also just really loved seeing Katza and Poe again because I absolutely adored them in the first book so it was nice to see where they're at eight years later. If I did have to give a complaint about this book, it was that the beginning was so slow. It took me so long to become invested in the story. But once I was invested in the story, I was invested in the story. I also didn't really love the ending because I feel that Bitter Blue and Saf's relationship ended so abruptly it just wasn't satisfying in my opinion. I did really like the inclusion of the ciphers. I think that that was a really cool addition to the story. I also loved Death, the castle librarian. He was really cool. I really enjoyed trying to figure out the mystery behind King Lex's rule and what his advisors had to go through. Overall, I did really enjoy my time in this world and I'm very excited to pick up Winter Keep sometime in the future. The next book I have is Eventide by Sarah Goodman. I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. The book follows Lila and Verity, two sisters who, after the downward spiral of their father's mental health, has to go live in Arkansas. Upon arriving, Lila is taken in by Miss Maeve, the school teacher. But unfortunately for Verity, there is no room for her, and so she becomes a farmhand at a farm nearby. While there, Verity is warned to stay out of the woods because there is a well that has a very dark past. And it's like the story of her trying to get back to her sister, but also being very interested in this well and what it holds. I loved the spooky vibes of this book and this town in the middle of nowhere. I was so invested in the story about the forest and the well and what it meant to the town. I think that it was very interesting to try to figure out the mystery behind it. I really liked how this was set in the 1900s. I don't think I've ever read a historical thriller book before, especially one with paranormal aspects, so I thought that was a really cool addition to the story. I liked Verity as a main character. I thought it was really cool how she would stop at nothing to try to figure out the secrets that were being held from her. I also really liked how protective she was over her sister. I really liked the focus on family in this, whether it be found family or blood family. The beginning of the book was honestly heartbreaking. I really felt for Verity, like, losing your mother and father in such a short time period and then getting your sister, the only remaining family that you had left, taken away from you would just be the end of me honestly. But I did really like the family that Verity found in this and I love how she finally found happiness even though she didn't think that she was ever going to be able to. I really liked the friendships that Verity made along the way with Delilah and Jeremiah. They were just so precious and just so sweet. But I will say that I was not a fan of the love triangle and definitely wish that it just didn't exist in this book. But I will also say that I was intrigued by one of the like things that happened with the love interest because I wasn't expecting it but then I was able to guess why it happened so that was a little bit disappointing. I really liked the mystery behind all the family secrets and I was definitely intrigued by Miss Maeve. I was obsessed with trying to figure out her history and how she fit into the story. I do think that the ending was a bit rushed and sloppily done but I did have a really good time while I was reading the story. I definitely will be looking at this author some more when more work comes out by them because this is 
is their debut novel, but it was a lot of fun, so 3.5 out of 5 stars. The next book I have is Anxious People by Frederick Bachman, and I gave this a 4.5 out of 5 stars. So this book follows a failed bank robbery where the bank robber goes into an apartment viewing and holds everybody in that viewing hostage. A few hours later, the hostages are released and the police enter the viewing because they believe that the bank robber is still in the building. Unfortunately, the bank robber is nowhere to be found, so then the police begin their interviews with the people who were being held hostage in order to try to figure out who was helping the bank robber escape, and it's like the story of that. I freaking loved this book and these characters so much. They were so funny and quirky and unique. The author describes like all of them as idiots and honestly that is so accurate. They are such lovable idiots. I was giggling throughout the entire book with their interactions and just the way that they talked was so funny. But then in the next few pages you're like sobbing because they're talking about things that are so like heartfelt. It's such a roller coaster of emotions. <laughs> One of my favorite tropes are when all of the characters seem to have nothing to do with each other and then they all come together in the end. I have no idea what that trope is called. I like to call it Valentine's Day because of that one movie, Valentine's Day, where that trope takes place. But again, I have no idea what it's called, but this book does it. Chef's Kiss, let me tell ya. Although this book is overly funny and has you laughing out loud. It also touches on some deeper topics like suicide, mental illness, and what it means to be a parent. So I've never read a Frederick Bachman book, but after reading this, I want to pick up literally everything they've ever written because I just love this book. So so that's my plan for the near future. Find every Frederick Bachman book that's ever been written and binge read them all. The next book I have is A Study in Charlotte. This is by Brittany Cavallaro, and I gave this 3.5 out of 5 stars. It follows Charlotte Holmes, who is the great, 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 granddaughter of Sherlock Holmes. She's attending university in Connecticut where she meets Jamie Watson who she becomes instant rivals with. That is until a student that they recently threatened turns up dead which makes them the prime suspects in a murder investigation so now they need to work together in order to clear their names before it's too late and it's like the story of that. This was actually a lot better than I thought it was going to be. Honestly I had such low expectations for this book but I was pleasantly surprised. I really liked how the story was told from Jamie's point of view and we got to see Charlotte from his eyes. I think that that was a great way to tell the story. The book is very fast-paced, very action-packed. I absolutely adored Charlotte as a main character. I thought she was so ruthless and I absolutely loved that about her. She was just so kick-ass and such a strong female lead. I'm very excited to pick up the next book in the series just to see more of Charlotte. I didn't realize that the book was going to touch on very dark topics such as sexual assault and drug addiction, but I really loved how Charlotte took the time to like reclaim bits and pieces of herself as the story went on. I liked Jamie for the most part, but he was also very confusing to me because at one point he would be a little sweet cinnamon roll, but then the next page he would be punching a wall and it just was very contradictory to me. It didn't make sense the way that he was reacting to things. But I did love Jamie and Charlotte together. I think that their banter was hilarious. I loved how snarky they were with each other and they were just honestly a grand old time. I also really loved how the mystery was not predictable at all. I honestly had no idea what was going on for the majority of the story and I think that's because it's so outlandish. But like I said, I am intrigued with seeing where the story goes from here so I will be picking up the second book in the series at some point. But yeah, 3.5 out of 5 stars. And then the final book that I have for this wrap up is Catwoman Soul Stealer by Sarah J Mass, and I give this a 4 out of 5 stars. The book follows Celine Kyle who leaves Gotham City only to return two years later as Holly Vanderhees who is a blonde socialite by day and Catwoman by night. The book also follows Batwing who is also known as Luke Fox. He is left in charge of protecting Gotham City while Batman is away on a top secret mission and it's like the story of those two interacting. I like this way more than I thought I was going to. I did not have the highest hopes for it because a lot of people rate these DC icon books average, like three stars, so I 
like I said, did not have the highest hopes, but pleasantly surprised. This book is insanely fast-paced. I don't think there was a dull moment in it at all right from the very first chapter. I was instantly hooked on these characters and their story. I am the biggest fan of villain stories. I instantly fell in love with Selena and her ferocity in protecting the ones that she loves. The inclusion of Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy was by far my favorite part of this book. They are two of my favorite DC characters, so I had no idea that they would be included in this book. So I like physically gasped <laughs> when they were on page because I was just like so mind blown and excited to read a story about them. I loved watching the relationship between Catwoman, Selina, and Poison Ivy and Harley Quinn grow as the story progressed. I just freaking love these three badass women. I also really like the inclusion of the chapters from Luke's point of view because I think that that really enhanced the story and getting to see the events from his point of view was a great addition. I also really liked learning more about him as the story went on, especially when it comes to his PTSD from being an ex-marine. I thought it was really interesting to read about. So overall, I really enjoyed this. Definitely recommend if you haven't checked it out yet. I thought it was a lot of fun, so four out of five stars. All right, everybody. So that was my part four of my November wrap-up. I'll leave the other three parts of the wrap-up down below if you're interested to see the first 15 books that I read this month, but let me know down below if you have read any of these books, what you thought of them, and I will see you all in the next video. Goodbye!